The following tutorial is brought to you by wholeloops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Glorious OTT. The preset for multiband dynamics found in Ableton Live. OTT is also a free multiband dynamics plugin by X for Records for those who don't use Ableton. But what I'm going to show you is the way I use it as a mixing and tone shaping tool on this musical idea that I put together out of whole loop samples. The song is a synth, a piano layer, and a vocal sample. The synth and piano layer came from pop and progressions. This vocal sample came from raw hits and our snap as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work on this synth loop. You can hear right off the bat when you drop it on, it sounds way different. Uh, so what this is, is a uh, high band, mid band, and low band, either expander or uh, I guess reducer, you could call it. And there's also some gain on the output of each band, but what we uh, do to compensate for that is just turn out the output gain here. And uh, let's see what we can do by adding some high frequency into this. It's a lot of kind of noise in the attack that you never even heard before. Granted, this is as extreme as it gets because we're on 100% here. If you like the shininess of the top end but you don't want it so piercing, then your mountain knob kind of becomes a uh, wet dry for the effect. I find that the closer to 100% you go, the closer to uh, minus 24 you have to go on the output knob to keep the volumes the same. Let's pull some mids in. Maybe a little bit less on the attack. A little bit less on the highs. Maybe you want this to be a little bit more full with some low end. Oh. Really pulls the sub out of there. And again, you always got this amount knob to kind of pick a happy medium between the two. I kind of like how it sounds. <clears throat> Maybe around here. Or, as it builds up, you can automate this to help make it grow. Next, I want to, uh, let's put some OTT on this lead. Are you one of the many music producers who struggle with music theory? Wouldn't it be nice to have a library of blazing hot chord progressions freshly prepared for your beats? Here at Whole Loops, we've got the solution to your struggle. Introducing Poppin' Progressions, our very first MIDI collection of major and minor pop structured chord progressions ready to drop into your session. You'll never waste your time again struggling to construct confusing chords or begin a musical idea. Just grab a pop-in progression and drop it into your session. Pop-in progressions is available now only at wholeloops.com. Let's put it before the reverb. We're gonna try combining some. So on this sound, I know for sure I don't want any lows, so I'm gonna grab the blue edge and pull it all the way down. And uh, definitely gonna want this to be nice and shiny. Maybe not quite all the way, but I push it all the way just to get that blue one out of there. And pull it back. Really brings out a lot of the uh, nuance. And again, we can pull the amount back. Mix it in there nice. It's a little bit much on both those. A little bit too much on here. A 
Let's uh, let's duplicate this and put one after the reverb, and uh, turn it all the way down. And we're just gonna use a little bit. Or maybe we don't want so much of the top end on the reverb. We just want to bring out the mids. Uh, nice and clean. Let's check out our piano. Definitely going to want to keep this sounding a little bit more natural than that. But let's pull up our mids and see what we get. Maybe turn that up and turn this down. Gives you some nice detail on the top. A little bit more full. For an electronic song like this, you can get away with a uh, more processed sounding piano. Let's try automating this and see what happens. like filtering it in, but not. Let's do that with this one too. As you can see, this is such a powerful tone shaping tool for just deciding, you know, do I want this to be a mid-rangey sound or a bassy sound or a really shiny on the top kind of sound. Very applicable throughout both the songwriting and the production and the mixing stages. I don't really use this for mastering. I don't really use this, like I said, on drums, but for changing the way a synth sounds, this has been a go-to quick fix. Uh, tool that has helped me tremendously. And I hope it helps you. And if you'd like me to talk about another plugin, leave a comment telling me why. I appreciate you sticking around, watching this video, subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you next week with another tutorial. Peace out.